Hi, my name is Paul Roberts, and today we're going to talk about the second pillar of True Shin Buddhism. That's the second major Dharma idea that defines the Dharma teaching of Master Shinrin or Shinrin Shonen. Now, the first pillar, which we already had a video on, concerned the idea that we should all awaken our aspiration for enlightenment. In fact, that's the very definition of what being a Buddhist of any sort really is. Awaken your aspiration for enlightenment. Get in touch with your fundamental desire, which is your desire to become a fully enlightened being or a Buddha. If you haven't listened to that teaching, I encourage you to stop this one, go back, listen to that one first, and then this one will make more sense to you when you listen to it after. Having said that, the second pillar of True Shin Buddhism is Master Shinran's assertion that nothing that we do in the way of practice, of Buddhist practice of any sort, no activity of body or mind that we engage in to improve ourselves incrementally to the point where we can become free beings, enlightened beings, Buddhas, nothing works for us any more in this day and age. No matter what you do, and no matter how long you do it for, you will not achieve your aspiration if your aspiration is to become a Buddha. Now this is the most radical departure from all other teachings in all other schools of Buddha Dharma. So I want to read you some selected passages from Master Shinran's writings so that you recognize this is not my idea, this is Master Shinran's idea. So these passages come from Master Shinran's Hymns of the Dharma Ages, and I'm just going to read them and perhaps put a little bit of commentary in as I do. <clears throat> he says, It is now more than 2,000 years since the passing of Shakyamuni Tathagata. The right and semblance ages have already closed. So lament disciples of later times. Now amid the five defilements of the last Dharma age, sentient beings are incapable of practice and realization. Hence the teachings that Shakyamuni left behind have all passed into the Naga's palace. During the right semblance and last ages, Amida's primal vow has spread. At the end of the semblance and in this last Dharma age, good practices have all gone into the Naga's palace. Now what Master Shinran is saying here is that there are three different ages of the Dharma, three different periods since Shakyamuni has been here on the earth. In the first period, called the Right Dharma Age, people were able to practice the Dharma and achieve spectacular results in very little time. There are so many stories in the Buddhist canon of amazing results that people had over and over and over again when they simply practiced the Dharma as Shakyamuni instructed them to, doing this sort of meditation, that sort of practice. One of my favorite stories is the story of a man who lived in a forest. His name was Angulima. And Angulima was a crazy man. Back then they would call him demon-possessed. Today we'd give him a psychological diagnosis. But he would stay in the forest and he would lie in wait for travelers and he would come out and he would waylay them and he would kill them and rob them. But not just that, he would actually take their fingers, cut off their fingers, and he wore a necklace of fingers around his neck. He was a crazy person, a homicidal maniac. One day, Shakyamuni Buddha was walking by himself in that same forest and Angulima saw him, and of course he decided what he was going to do was kill him as well. So he sneaks up behind Shakyamuni and he starts to chase him. And he's, he's walking after Shakyamuni, he's walking faster and faster, but no matter how fast he walks, he can't catch Shakyamuni. For some reason he just can't catch him. And then he starts to break out into a run. He's running after Shakyamuni, and he simply can't catch him. Finally, Angulima says, full of frustration, why are you moving? And Shakyamuni turns around to him and he says, Why is your mind moving? And in that very moment, Angulima fell down on the ground and he worshipped Shakyamuni as the Buddha that he was. And he was delivered from all his demons, from all his darkness, 
from all his mental craziness in that one moment, simply by the power of Shakyamuni Buddha's Buddha field, the power of his energetic field, delivered, healed, and saved Angulima, and he stood up and became one of Shakyamuni's best disciples. And this power of Shakyamuni, this Buddha field, was the power that empowered so many people in that first Dharma age so that they could become advanced in their Buddhist practice and get to a place of non-retrogression very quickly. And what Master Shinran is saying is that that power is not available to us anymore. We live in the third Dharma age. Shakyamuni Buddha has receded in time and space and we cannot draw upon his power the way the early Buddhists did. Let me read you some more of what, Shak uh, what Shinran says. He says, without entrusting themselves to the Tagathas, pat compassionate vow, no sentient being of these times, the last Dharma age and the fifth 500 year period since Shakyamuni's passing, will have a chance of parting from birth and death. And the 95 non-Buddhist teachings defile the world. The Buddha's path alone is pure. Only by going forth and reaching enlightenment can we benefit others in this burning house, this Saha world in which we live. This is the natural working of the vow. So Master Shinran is saying that none of us will have a chance of parting from birth and death. And this is so critical because all of us have been traversing through birth and death for countless lives over and over and over again. And the end of suffering, the beginning of enlightenment, means finally parting from birth and death once and for all. Here's Master Shinran again. He says, The aspiration for enlightenment through self-power taught in the path of the sages is beyond our minds and words. We foolish beings ever sinking in transmigration, how could we awaken it? Ever sinking, ever sinking, under the guidance of Buddhas who appeared in this world, three times the sands of the Ganges in number, we awaken the aspiration from supreme enlightenment, but our self-power failed, <clears throat> and we continue to transmigrate. Even the wise who lived during the semblance Dharma age, that's the second age of the Dharma, when enlightenment was still possible by self-power, even the wise who lived during the semblance Dharma age put aside the various teachings of self-power and entered the gate of the Nimbutsu, for it is the teaching that is in accord with times and with beings. He's talking specifically here about Nagarjuna, the first of the great seven Pure Land Masters, who became a Bodhisattva by virtue of trying to get there through the self-powered teachings. But finally he gave up and he said, this is too hard. I'm going to follow the path of entrusting Amida Buddha, the gate of the Nimbutsa, because this is the teaching in accord with times and with beings. And then Master Shinran goes on to say, through the words of the witness and protection of the countless Buddhas throughout the Ten Quarters, we should realize that the mind of self-power aspiring for supreme enlightenment is incapable of reaching fulfillment. Since enlightenment cannot be attained through self-power, we have been transmigrating for innumerable ages, innumerable kalpas. And although we have the teachings of Shakyamuni, there are no sentient beings who can practice them. Hence it is taught that in the last Dharma age, not a single person will attain enlightenment through them. In our age, I have to repeat this, this is so critical to Master Shinran's thought, it is taught by Master Shinran that in this Dharma age, not a single person will attain enlightenment through practicing the various teachings of the self-powered Dharma gates of Shakyamuni Buddha. Now, there's only two possibilities here. Either Master Shinrin is ignorant and deluded, or Master Shinrin is speaking the Dharma truth for our age. If he's ignorant and deluded, frankly, you should ignore everything he says. We have so many ignorant and deluded teachers in this world, and if Master Shinrin is one of those, he can't really help you get to the far shore of full awakening. 
you should go find yourself some other teacher to listen to. But, if Master Shinrin is telling the truth, if he is telling us the right Dharma, if he is telling us the way things really are in our day and age concerning this, quick, this fundamental question of how does a person become a Buddha, a fully enlightened being, if Master Shinrin is correct about this, then this is the most important thing that you could possibly hear once you have awakened your own aspiration for enlightenment. It simply doesn't make sense if you want to become a Buddha, to do various practices, to keep various precepts, to engage in various meditations, to go on a 10-day retreat or a 20-day retreat or a 50-day retreat or a 1-year retreat or a 3-year retreat, if these practices cannot truly lead you to the place of non-retrogression and enlightenment. And Master Shidran declares unequivocally that they cannot. Nothing you do, and no matter how long you do it for, will bring you to the end of suffering and the beginning of enlightenment. This is the second pillar of true Shin Buddhism, the second major idea of Master Shinrin, which differentiates this Dharma message from everything else that's taught in all the various schools of Buddhism. Now here's your job. You have understood this message because I've explained it clearly. If you're a Tibetan Buddhist, a Zen Buddhist, a Theravadan Buddhist, a Tendai Buddhist, any kind of a Buddhist whatsoever, Master Shinrin says, your practice will not bring you the result you desire. And now your job is to find out, is this true or not? How do you find out if it's true? The way you find out is by listening deeply. That is the only practice we have in true Shin Buddhism. We listen deeply to the Dharma. I've created another video. It's called Listen Deeply. And it explains exactly what we mean by that in great detail. It's easy to understand. Basically, when we listen deeply, we listen with our heads first to understand the content, and then we listen with our hearts, laying aside all our pre-existing thoughts, ideas, and opinions to determine whether that content is true. We follow the instructions that Buddha gave to the Kalama people when he said, don't believe anybody's teachings, including mine, but ponder them deeply in your heart and decide for yourselves which teachings are actually true. If you listen deeply to the Dharma and ask the Buddha within, you will hear for yourself that Master Shinrin's teaching is absolutely true. That's why nobody becomes a Buddha these days. That's why people practice their whole lives long and end up struggling over and over and over again with their blind passions, their cravings and aversions, their delusions and obscurations, their ignorance, and our intractable, intractable egotism. The egotism that, that, that Shakyamuni Buddha called the builder of this house. The last thing he discovered when he sat under the Bodhi tree right before he himself transition from being a mere man to the Buddha of our age. I wish you all the best, and I'll be back again shortly with another teaching on the third pillar of true Shin Buddhism.